So it's Sunday, this is race day, and this time last year there were over 324,000 people streaming through these gates, but as I'm sure you would have seen by now, here in Australia, in Melbourne, the Australian Formula One Grand Prix has been cancelled. Now I had planned this really big video for you guys here on YouTube about the Formula One Grand Prix. I was going to show some of the racing, the air displays, the Royal Australian Air Force roulettes were due to be performing this weekend. And I also took a flight over the circuit a couple of days ago in Echo Yankee Zulu just to get some aerial footage which I thought I could cut in to the footage down here just to make this kind of really nice story for you guys about the Grand Prix. Obviously though, my plans have changed a little. So what I didn't want to do is sit at home feeling all depressed about the state of the world and getting really worried with everything I'm seeing on Twitter. Instead I thought I'd come down here very quickly, show you what it's like right now when it's supposed to be packed with hundreds of thousands of people, but also share with you some of that footage that I did take when I was flying Echo Yankee Zulu, the Cirrus SR22, up there over the circuit. They've still got the fences up, so this is about as close as we can get to the track. If you're familiar with the Formula One Grand Prix here in Melbourne, that's turn five behind me at the moment as they go onto the straight at the top of Albert Park. But yeah, so this flight in Echo Yankee Zulu, now a few of you when I posted some bits on Instagram asked, well, isn't the airspace above you restricted? Are you actually allowed to fly over the circuit? Well, if you check what we have here in Australia, the Aeronautical Information Publication, or the AIP, they release supplementary publications, or SUPS. SUP. SUP. So, and these subs detail the restrictions and the flight areas that you can't go into. Now the airspace over Albert Park is restricted, but only down to a height of 1,500 feet. Now that actually expands when the flight displays go on, that actually expands from the surface level up into controlled airspace. Then of course you can't fly when those air displays are going on, but they're no tamed over a certain time period. So as long as you're outside those times of the air display, and as long as you're not in that 1,500 restricted airspace for helicopters, then yes, you can fly over the top of the circuit. Now, now to capture the footage that I'm going to show you, the GoPro that I use, which is at the bottom of the wing, it hangs underneath the wing and it points forward, we actually change that to angle downwards. What? Yeah, I think all the way down. I kind of want it to point. This is like a big drone shot. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you know the sunlight, the beautiful morning sunrise? It's the golden yeah, on your hair. <laughs> Pointing that camera downwards actually meant they had quite a unique view of takeoff, which I haven't seen before. Here's what it looks like taking off from Morabin with a camera pointing directly at the runway from about two or three feet off the ground. Bramit Tower, Echo Yankee Zulu ready, holding point Alpha 8, upwind departure, Albert Park Lake. Yankee Zulu, cliff takeoff. Cliff takeoff, Echo Yankee Zulu. So after I took off from Morabin then, basically climbed up to 1,500 feet and pointed myself towards Albert Park. Before I did that, I just wanted to check that Point Ormond, which is an area just over the coast where they do parachute drops, wasn't active. Melbourne Centre, Echo Yankee Zulu, request status of Point Ormond. Uh, the station calling Point Ormond's not active. Copied, Echo Yankee Zulu. And once I knew that airspace wasn't active and I knew I could fly through it, I set my heading for Albert Park and I did my first flyover, which to be honest, I think was probably my favorite one. Yeah, I like that one too. Then I flew over Port Phillip Bay, did quite a tight left-hand orbit and came back and flew back over Albert Park from the other direction. Then over the top of Albert Park, now I didn't want to cut into the Class C controlled airspace by doing a tight turn to the left, so I actually angled myself out to the right and flew a wide orbit over the top of the eastern suburbs here in Melbourne. Watching this footage, if you live in the eastern suburbs, if you can see your house down there, leave a comment. And as I turned back left again, then I did my final pass with the sun behind me over the top of Albert Park. Pretty awesome experience to be able to look down from 1,500 feet, see what's going on below me. There were some cars going around the track. I could see people down there as well. It's surprising how much you can actually see even though you are one and a half thousand feet up. And then once that was done, I basically turned myself back towards Brighton, which is our VFR inbound reporting point. Made my call to Morabin Tower. Morabin Tower, Echo Yankee Zulu at Brighton, 1,500 inbound with November. 
Downwind, runway 35 left. Downwind 35 left, echo Yankee Zulu. And then came in and landed at Morabin just like normal. Now to those of you that have been asking about how all these world events at the moment are going to affect my round the world trip, firstly thank you for your concern, it means a lot to me to know that you're looking out for me. Secondly, I'm proceeding as if I'm going ahead and departing on June the 29th as per the original plan. That's my plan A, but of course I'm keeping an eye on the situation. So I have a backup plan, which is to maybe go slightly later to delay the trip, maybe around a month, or also to change the route as well. Maybe don't go through as many countries as I was originally planning to. But there is of course a plan C, which is the one that I don't want to enact, which is putting the whole thing off until 2021. Reason being is I have a weather window of between June and October, which is pretty much my best time for flying around the world through all the different climates I'll be going through. And if I can't do it this year, I can't push it back too much later. If it gets to around June, July time and things are still looking uncertain, pretty much my only option is gonna be postponing until 2021. I don't want to do that. I don't want to make that video where I'm, I'm postponing my round the world trip. I don't want to release that on the channel, but if it happens because of what's going on in the world, because I have to be respectful of other people's rules, and I obviously don't want to transmit this virus in the trip that I'm doing to anyone else around the world, well, I just have to play it by ear for now. In the meantime though, thanks for watching this short video on that flight over Albert Park. Stay safe, be sensible, don't listen to too much of what you see online because a lot of it is unfounded and misinformation. Stick to the official sources of information, look after each other, look after yourself and I'll keep you updated with what's happening on my trip. Thank you very much for watching, do click on subscribe if you're not already a subscriber of the channel, give us a like if you enjoyed that, otherwise thank you as always for watching.